Hello, this is Reza from Radacad and I'm going to show you how to create a row number based on a group that we start for every group in Power BI using Power Query. Let's see how it works. Um, in Power BI, there are different ways to create a row number. Um, I'm talking about the row number that you want to create statically. Uh, there is no need for the user to select something that uh, and the row number to be created based on that selection. A pre-calculated row number. Um, uh, you can do that in Power Query. To go to Power Query, you can easily go to Home tab, uh, Transform Data, and that brings uh, Power Query Editor. Um, in the Power Query editor, uh, you can go to add column, add an index column, and you can create an index from zero that would be starting from zero all the way to the last row based on the current order. So if you want this to be based on different order, first you have to sort it. Uh, you can add the index starting from one, or you can even add it uh, with a custom starting uh, value like a thousand increment 10 at a time something like that right it's all up to you how you want to create it but this index as you can see is uh, creating index or row number from the first row to the last row no matter what is the grouping you might want that in that case that's easy all done you just use that index uh, with the close and apply but you might want this to be a grouped index in that case uh, let's say, for example, I want this to uh, have an uh, index for the business type, then an index for this type, an index for psychology type, for each of these types, uh, uh, an index restarting for each of those. This way I won't do that, and I don't have the option to do grouping for that. But I can do it in another way. Uh, so it is done through three steps. This method that I'm explaining to you is one of the easy methods of doing it. There are other methods as well. Uh, this method is first uh, we do the grouping based on the group field we want and that can be more than one field you can use the control and select multiple if you want to in this case I just select one right click group by and group by is available in different places you can select that from the right click uh, my type field is already the group by field and then the operation this is important in the operation select all rows that means it will create a subtable instead of an aggregation. It will create a subtable. Uh, the column name doesn't matter because we are not using that column name anyway. Uh, so, so make sure you select all rows. Click on OK. This will group that data. As you can see, the data is now grouped. Um, and I can go and uh, make some changes. Let me enable zooming so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, so now that I have the group data, just to show you what this data looks like, I can click on a blank area in that cell, not on the table itself, blank area in that cell. That shows that this table is like a subtable of business category, or this table is subtable of this category, right? Uh, just click on a blank area, not on the table, because if you click on a table, then it drills down, you have to go to the steps and remove that step, right? So this is a subtable. That was the first step to create this subtable and grouping. The second step is to add index to that subtable because the subtable doesn't have an index. Now there is no graphical interface for that at the moment, but you can go to add column and add a custom column. That's the second step. Add the custom column um, using this function table dot add index column. You might see the IntelliSense or you might not see that. That's absolutely fine. The main thing is that Power Query is case sensitive. So this should be exactly written like that. Uh, this, um, this function has three inputs. One is the column that has the table in it. For my case, it's called count. The second, what is my new index column name? I'm going to call it just index. Put it inside double quote. And then what is the starting or initial value? One. So the column that has the tables, the new column name, and the initial value, right? And again, the name of this column doesn't matter as well. Click on OK. 
After this step, I have another column with a table in it, which if I click on that, it's similar to that column, but with one extra column in it, index. If you see the difference between this one and that one, the difference is that this one has the index. The other one doesn't, right? So that's the index for this group, right? So that's it. All I need is this column. I don't really need other columns. So as the last step, I remove other columns. Even the type is in this table anyway, so I don't really need that type. So I remove all other columns. Then I expand. And when you expand, uh, make sure uncheck the user original name as a prefix because otherwise it would be like custom.title, custom.type. We don't want that, so uncheck that. Click on OK. Here it is all expanded with the index. All perfectly fine. Now the last thing, which is optional, you see all the columns data type changed to ABC123. This is the data type in Power Query we call as any. Uh, to change them all at the same time, you can select all the columns using Control A, then transform detect data type. And here it is, all the data types fixed. And you see the index is restarting for every group perfectly fine. So this is a method that you can use easily in Power Query to get your index uh, based on a group. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos of Power BI and AI. Thank you.